Hello, my name is Tara Hudson and I'm the branch manager at the Northwest Library. And one of the parts of working at Northwest, um, the Early Literacy Center, is I have an opportunity to look at lots of picture books. Um, I get probably 100 picture books in a week, take a look at them, decide uh, if we want to order them, or um, make lists of great ones that I recommend to my uh, patrons. So, once a month, I am now going to go over some of my favorites and share with you um, so that you can get a copy of some of these. Now, if you see a book that you like in this set um, that I share today, you can call any of our locations and ask for those books to be put on hold for you. Or you can go to the website and reserve them um, to be sent to the location that you choose. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. First, I'm going to start with LeBron James's new book. I promise. Okay, so for your basketball fans, we have LeBron here. And he's written a couple of picture books. And I always, um, I have a spot in my Goodreads about picture books written by uh, celebrities. And sometimes they're great and sometimes they're lacking. But this book is got, this book has, I promise, has a positive message in it. Um, it's illustrated by Nina Mata, who's a New York Times best-selling illustrator. Okay, so bright colors, lots of fun. Um, children of different races and ethnic ethnicities, excuse me, um, which is kind of can be hard to find in picture books. Okay, so I will show you here. I promise to ask for help whenever I need it, to reach for my star even when I can't see it. So um, kids promising to do well, to treat each other well, um, to be good to one another. So this is a great book, has a good positive message in it. Again, this is I Promise by LeBron James. It's our first one. Our next book is Robo Baby, okay? So this book is uh, by David Wisner. Um, he is a three-time Caldecott um, medalist, um, so he also does his illustrations. So if you have any robot lovers, um, or even Lego, they might like some of these books, or like this book. Um, I will say I find it, of course I turned to a page that doesn't have it, it has a little bit of a feel of a graphic novel on each some of the pages. Um, so they have you know, like the squares that you would read in the correct order. Um, and there's not a ton of words in it. Mostly it's word bubbles. So if you have a new reader, they may be able to read some of these words. Okay. And they're great illustrations. I just really love his illustrations. Okay, so that's Robo Baby by David Wisner. I have two alphabet books. Um, I really enjoy alphabet books for a couple of reasons. Um, as you're going through the alphabet and you're reading with your child, um, you can ask them what the next letter is going to be. So you're working on your um, letters. You can also have them try to recognize what letter um, is on the page for letter recognition. Um, and these alphabet books, especially these a little bit bizarre ones, um, can create great vocabulary words for your kids. So this is The Invisible Alphabet by Joshua David Stein. And I think the illustrations are done by Ron Barrett. There's only two colors in this book, or three, white, black, and orange. So what you see on the cover is sort of what you get. So let me show you. Okay, so here. Uh, F is for freed, and G is for gone. So these are kind of illustrations <clears throat> Um, vocabulary words for something that might be difficult to put a word to. Um, empty bed, what would you use? The gone is a good word. And freed. So again, good vocabulary words and letter recognition. Just ask your child what letter this is. And it's nice that it has the, um, the colors there. Then you have a super colorful page. H is for hidden. I think it's really interesting because as an illustrator, even at myself, as not, as not an illustrator, trying to figure out how to draw a picture for hidden, um, I think the author does really good for this one. So this one is a lot of fun. Um, again, this is 
the invisible alphabet. This one was written um, last March in 2020, and I want to read you what it says in the back. This book is called And the People Stayed Home by Kitty O'Mara. Um, and the People Stayed Home was written in March 2020 in response to the global coronavirus pandemic. The poem was first posted on the author's Facebook page and quickly went viral. It's a hopeful message of profound healing for people and the earth stuck, struck a chord all over the world. In these pages, the thoughtful words are richly illustrated and words and images come together to communicate an optimism for our shared human experience and our future that will resonate with all readers of all ages. Excuse me. So if um, you're struggling or you have struggled to talk to your kids about the pandemic um, and why they have to stay home or maybe why they can't see their grandparents, this might be a good book without... This book talks about the pandemic without coming out and talking about the pandemic, so to speak. Um, it kind of is talking about what the people did when they stayed home. Okay, let me see. Um, it's got lots of colorful pictures, which is always a bonus. Okay, this is one I like, okay? So, people who stayed home, they rested, and they worked out, and they made art, and they played games. So these might be things that you did with your child or your children in the last couple of months as we have dealt with the pandemic. Okay. You could also think about, turn this into a conversation about things that you did or have done during the pandemic that are different, um, like not going to story time. But we didn't get to go to story time, but we got to watch it online. Um, so making it a positive. It's not fun to have to stay home, but how do we make this, um, you know, something to learn about, okay? So again, And the People Stayed Home by Kitty O'Mara. All right, excellent book. This book I really enjoy. This is called Night Walk, and it's by uh, Sarah Lee O'Leary and Ellie R. Scott. Um, this is about a little girl who can't sleep and her dad finds her awake, and so they go on a night walk. Um, and if you have an opportunity to take your kids on a night walk, I would highly recommend it. Um, maybe when the weather gets warmer, but I will tell you on Christmas Eve, when it was snowing and it was dark out, I went for a walk in the snow late at night, and it was one of the most glorious things that I did last year. Um, just watching the snow fall and how quiet it was. So, um, a night walk. So they walk through different parts of the city and to the park. Okay, so here she is not being able to sleep. And she gets dressed and she walks by this building. And it's kind of one of those things, thinking about what all those people are doing in each of those rooms. Okay, so this is a good book um, where you can create your own memories. We talk about maybe when the springtime we'll go on a night walk. Um, kind of maybe call out owls or listen to night creatures or see the fireflies. Uh, this is a really beautiful book. I really like this one, Night Walk. Now this book, I am in the favor that books with flaps, um, pieces that you move, kids really enjoy and they really remember. So this book is called Counting Creatures and the author has also written um, Animal Alphabet which is a lot like this one, it has a lot of the same colors. Uh, you can see as I move this, there's some iridescent um, leaves in here and Counting Creatures is on here. Okay, um, I'm a big bird lover, so I of course love the uh, bird on it. Uh, but this is the kind of book where you have pieces that move. Okay, so Counting Creatures. So this is a great book to count with your kids to work on their numbers. Okay, and you could do that without even getting into the book. Oh, what are these? These are flowers. Let's count how many flowers are on this page. One, two, three, four, five, six. So although you're reading in a book, a book for enjoyment, you're also helping your kids learn those early um, skills that they need for kindergarten. Okay. All right. So 
This bat has, look at how cool about this, one baby holding it tight as they fly through the night, okay? So this book is about different animals and counting. There's lots of see-through pieces and large pieces that you can lift up or lift down, and there's more opportunities to count throughout, okay? Beautiful book. If you end up liking this one, I highly recommend that you get the animal alphabet too. All right, here is another celebrity written alphabet book. Again, um, not very often. We're seeing it more, but kids of color um, on the front cover of a book or just in general in picture books, we're starting to see more often, which is really great because then kids can identify with character in the book. So that's excellent. This is called C is for country. So again, building those, alpha, um, those letter skills and that vocabulary. And this book is by Lil Nas X. Okay, and in the back you can read about him. He's a multi, multiple Grammy award winning rapper, singer, and songwriter. And he's known for, in 2019, he wrote Old Town Road, okay? And like I said, I always like to see um, if celebrities are good at writing picture books or books in general or not. And so you'll have to let me know what you think of this one. Um, love the colors in this one. Love the letters. Um, okay, so we have C is for country. All right. And then this is a good opportunity to say to your kid, what else starts with the letter C? Maybe they have a C in their name or... Maybe they know C is for cookie because they've watched Sesame Street. N is for nap. And then what is this? This is a horse. He's taking a nap. This just really allows you to build some skills with your kids. So again, that is C is for country. All right. Now I did grab two J nonfiction books. Um, I, again, am a big animal person. So uh, I think this book is really cool. Uh, this is The Beak Book by Robin Page. Great, beautiful eagle on the front. Um, love the little eagle in the back, all right? So this would be in our 581s, which is where we keep the bird books, okay? And this book is just about the different beaks that birds have. There's not a ton of wording on it. There's these great big pictures that the kids are gonna look at. And then this beak is for tossing. And then there's a little bit of information about what um, the cormorant uses uh, his beak for and why he has a beak shaped like this. And then this beak is for crushing. And this is a shoebill stork. And then there's a little bit of information about um, why they have that kind of beak. So not a ton of information, not too much over information. There are exotic birds and then there's birds um, like the pileated woodpecker that you might see in your yard, okay? So again, this is the beak book. Love that one. And then I have Flying High, the story of gymnast, ch gymnastics champion Simone Biles. Okay, so um, if you have a gymnastics, a child in your house who loves gymnastics or sports or the, even the Olympics, this is a great book. If you have a child working on a biography, um, this is a good book about Simone Biles. Um, it does talk about her early life and her, uh, her siblings and then about her tumbling as a young kid. Um, but not a lot of words, okay? So early readers, okay, we have high bars, low bars, leap across the beam. Simone copies their moves and launches a dream. So we have rhyming in there, which is great. And then the, most of these words aren't too hard. So if you have a somewhat um, newer reader, they might be able to read much of this book with a little bit of help. All right, and of course, we skipped a year and the Summer Olympics may be happening this year. So as you're getting ready for the Olympics, you could read this book about Simone Biles because chances are she is gonna be at the next Olympics again. Um, and then this also talks about some of the moves that are named after her. Um, and like I said, I love the rhyming in it. So again, this is Flying High 
the story of gym, uh, gymnastics champion Simone Biles. So excellent book. So those are the books that I have for you today. In the comments, I would love to hear what picture books or J nonfiction books um, that your kids are enjoying uh, or books that you have found. And then again, if you want any of the books that I've shared with you today, uh, give us a call, go online and reserve them for your kids to read them. And then I'll be back next month with some more. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, let us know. Just reach out to the branches. Again, my name is Sarah Hudson, and I hope you enjoyed these picture books. Bye.